when my dad invented the Texas fire frame grate, he used the laws of physics to open up the hottest part of the fire to the room. Time magazine called it the physicist's fire. Let me show you how easy it is to start and maintain. We'll go back to about a half hour ago when I first built this fire. You can use split or unsplit logs or a combination of both. I'm going to make this fire with all split logs. And you want to start with your biggest log, put it in the back. Notice the grate is all the way in the back of the fireplace. Then I'm going to put one or two logs on the bottom, depending on how many I can fit. In this case, I can fit two in the bottom, that bigger log right there in the back. Then I'm going to put the top layer of logs on, and there we go. I want all the logs to be nestled, so this one's touching this one, this one's touching the back one, and the lower two are touching everything. It's like a sideways C, and they're all in contact, except they're not touching here, of course, because this is the slot where we're going to build the fire and where we're going to create the radiant heat. So the next step is to light the fire. Oh, I wanted to mention also, you want to, this is where you adjust the adjustable arms. If you want to raise it, you can take your poker and go like this to raise it, or you can go like this, tapping it to open it, to close it rather. Um, since the fire hasn't started yet, the logs are cold. You can lift them and, and you know use your hands. I like to have about a two inch opening in front. Two inches is just about perfect to get that fire started. Now it's time to light it and purists will only use paper but you can also use kindling if you prefer and I just like to take two pieces of Mississippi fatwood and put it right there in the slot on the lower pieces of wood. Then what you do is you take three sheets of newspaper and you're going to make three knots. And the knots go right inside in the, in the slot that you've created. Like that. And now we're ready to light it. It's that easy. I'm just going to light each of the three knots. And I'm just going to double check, make sure everything's touching, which it is. And let's see what happens. Double check, make sure your flue is open and when you light. You definitely want that open so you don't get smoke in the room. Now, the reason that I cleaned out the ashes before we started the fire is that if you let the ashes really pile up and you have hot coals touching the grate, it can eventually cause wear on the grate. So for the wanting longer life for your grate, do, uh, you know, try and keep the ashes cleared out underneath. This grate is made of hot rolled steel, so it will last a good long time, many, many years. Unlike the cast iron grates, it can burn out in a couple of years. I hear a lot of complaints about those. Now you can see that the fire has caught, that the paper has caught the kindling and it looks like the kindling is starting to catch the wood. And you can see how you don't have to mess with it, you don't have to fiddle with it. If you have it set up correctly, you can just sit back. I think the biggest mistake people might make is to leave that opening in front too large. You just want it to be about two inches. You can always open it up a little bit later on when the fire is going really well, but in the beginning definitely keep it tighter like that so it starts easily. I don't 
think my fireplace has ever been so clean. And it's definitely looking like the front log is catching. That's the first one to catch, that lower log, the upper log. Now, a lot of people like to start their fires with no kindling, which you can definitely do, but if you use a piece of kindling or two, it gives you a little more room for error, or if your wood isn't, you know, perfectly dry, although you do want to use seasoned wood. And if you go on our blog, I've, I've talked about how to know if your wood is seasoned and what kinds of wood make for a hotter fire. We recommend hardwood. Usually when you purchase a cord of wood, they deliver hardwood. And the other thing I want to point out, when you order, if you order a cord of wood, if you don't cut your own and split your own, but if you order it, definitely request longer lengths. I like to try and have two foot long logs if I can get them. So my log supplier will kind of give me more of the longer ones. So it's cooking along there. And it looks like it's off to a nice start. And here we are, it's later. It's really red in the cavity and we're really feeling some intense heat right now. Again, we have not moved the logs. We haven't done any pushing or poking. It's just maintaining itself really nicely. And you can see the red hot facings of all the logs in there. It's that hot part of the fire that we've opened up towards the room with those adjustable arms and that's what this grate is all about and that's what sets it apart. So the heart of the fire is opened up to the room so that we're feeling the radiant heat way out. And we have to really sit back from the fire now to be comfortable. It's really putting out some pretty good heat. Now if this was a conventional fire that had been going for about a half hour, we would have had to poke and roll the logs and move them around to keep it going. With this fire, we have literally just lit it with a match, and that's it. And it just keeps going. And that's what's one of the wonderful things about this arrangement. It's not just the heat that it creates, but the simplicity of maintaining it. You could just walk away and enjoy it, but not till the logs really start to burn down you have to think about either pushing them in or replacing them. I'm going to see if they need to be pushed in at all right now. Ah, there we go. Yes, they have started to burn down a bit. So you can see that. And that is the sum total of maintenance of this fire. Just pushing the logs in so they all maintain contact to maintain that cavity. And then over time, as the logs burn out, we will replace them. But that's going to be quite a while. We're about half an hour into it now. And it's going strong. We haven't had to do anything except just nudge the top and log, bottom log back about an inch since they started to burn down a bit. And we're getting a lot of heat from those red, really hot, hot red uh, facings of the log inside that cavity that have been opened up towards the room. No coals have started to drop down yet, and yet we still have really good heat coming out of that fire. All right, now I'm going to show you how to keep the fire going. Let's stay, say it's still early in the evening. Well, you can see that these pieces are really breaking up a lot. So I'm going to push them back as far as I can, let them break up if they need to. And then I'm going to put a new log on using the 
tongs and I'm just going to slide it on there. Put this one on top and I want to, I want to actually lift the arm a little bit here. So I'm going to do this. And I'm going to put yet another log on there. There. And we have our second fire for the evening. That easy. And here we are in phase two where we added the three logs a while ago and now they're going really strong and really hot and the fire has absolutely peaked in terms of the heat that's just pouring into the room right now. I'm going to turn out the lights so we can just enjoy the flames. Now if I wanted to keep this fire going later in the evening, I could very easily add a log right here on the bottom level and another log right up here on the top level. But I'm not going to do that. It's time to start winding down for the evening. But you can see how easy it is to keep a fire going all day long. I've had one going 24 hours when we were without heat at one point. Um, so that's just how you keep it going, is just add a log on the top, add a log on the bottom, and then just keep pushing them back, and you have sort of a non-stop fire if you choose. Right now, I'm going to let these logs burn out, and then I'm going to call it a night. <laughs>